Okay, everybody, come join me. I'm finally planting my first food forest plant. This is where it's going to go, right underneath our strangler fig. I'm going to be tearing out some of these plants, so come along with me and see what happens and see what I'll be planting. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Did my title page give you a clue? Okay, so right here I am pulling out, these are cana lilies, and making space for my passion vine, which will hopefully grow up either a strangler fig or what's here. Oh, palm tree. Or this palm that was almost strangled to death by the strangler fig. So I'm just making room here. What you hear in the background is either their Nande conjures. I will do an update as soon as I clean this bed out here uh, and plant my passion vine. And this is the type of passion vine, I think it's called ed edulis, or I'll have to look up the name again, but it is a true passion fruit passion vine. So stick around for what's next. All right. Let me just say my backyard didn't get neglected overnight. This all happened while I was sick my neighbor's house. Oh my gosh, that bougainvillea, I still love that. My old neighbor planted it and it's gorgeous still. Um, yeah, my garden didn't get neglected overnight. So I've come to the conclusion, if I just change a square foot or two square feet at a time, that I could get it producing fruit sooner than not doing anything at all. And I'm saying that because I know there's some of you who feel defeated, who have chronic illnesses, who haven't been able to, um, you know, do much with your yard. And it's extremely frustrating for you. I mean, look, I, if you see this bed over here, <laughs> I made this, you know, little rock mosaic in it a while ago. It's completely covered. And I have to dig down now and get all those rocks out. So what I'm doing is I'm, I, I'm changing my perspective because I was feeling overwhelmed. And this one is, it's just not, it's just neglected and it's also not producing anything I can eat other than like I showed on my other video. It's, uh, what was it? Oh my goodness, I can't even remember the name of the plant right now and I love it because I got it from my dad's house. Um, I also got that tree from my dad's house, the Fragapani. It was a tiny little thing when I planted it and he helped me. Um, anyway, oh, daylilies, daylilies. Uh, I believe the blossoms are edible. Not something I really want to try, but I would. I mean, why not? Um, anyway, so I'm clearing out this bed right here next to my strangler fig. It had a ton of cane lilies that were just getting too much water. So they were constantly getting rust and I really don't want to be spraying them so they can look green and lush. Um, just wrong plant, wrong place. And that's one of the things in gardening is you have to have the right plant, right place. And I just didn't. So it's a learning experience. I pull it out and we just try again. But um, unfortunately I hadn't, you know, gotten out here in like five years to pull it out. So yeah, these two square feet are probably enough work for today and then I will see if it's ready for planting. I'm gonna put a passion vine in there. I really wanna plant the passion vine because it's looking like it needs to be planted. It looks root bound um, and it does have blossoms on it already. So I wanna see if I can train it up the tree and we can get some fruit real soon. Okay, I'm almost ready. I don't know if you can see my little passion vine. There he is, there, there, there. In fact, here's one that bloomed yesterday. There's another right here. There. That should bloom tomorrow. And those are all pre fruits, basically, those flowers. So once they bloom, hopefully, you know, they self pollinate and will produce fruit. So I want to get this in the ground. I'm almost there, if you can see. Um, the container. It's almost there. 
once I get it there, you know, I'll show you what I've done. Uh, I got the idea to plant this near the tree from Pete Canaris. Canaris, I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, he's Green Dreams, Florida. Oh, great. Of course, somebody's car is going off as I'm saying all this. All right, so I've just started to bump this out a little bit. You want to bump it on the sides, especially if it's root bound. You want to still be careful with your plant, uh, not to just yank it out. That's not good for any plant. You might also just break it, you know, right off. So you want to be gentle as you're doing this, but you can give it a good pound around, you know, the container to loosen it up. And that's what I'm doing. And then I'll be hopefully planting it in my, oops, sorry about that my hole right there oh no I see a weed that's got to come out I don't know if you got that Oop. anyway that's my hole sorry about moving you around so much uh, I'm just excited to plant it some so it's in the ground and I had a mishap happen when I was taking it out of its container all the soil disengaged from the plant and went into the hole and filled the hole up before it could get the root ball or whatever the roots into the hole properly so I had to dig that out and then as I'm looking at the blossoms I noticed they had some scale I picked I just picked them off I hope you know I know that's not the way to do it but I did and I just hope I got you know them and killed them so I'm gonna have to go look up what you know is safe to really spray on this passion vine if anything um, maybe soap it up you know, with some Brunner's uh, soap and water. Just something safe because this is an edible plant. I don't want to be spraying it with anything else. Plus, I'm trying to have an organic garden. All right, now I'm going to clip these here. And I have twine so I can tie it up that direction. So it can grow up the twine and up the tree. And I hope that works. Uh, yeah follow along with me I filled the hole back in with native soil I did not go and get you know a top soil and any of that there was already their soil around um, you know the potting mix that this was planted into so I tried to mix that together a bit but yeah here we go I'm gonna go cut this loose and get it up on the trellis so excited I just had my daughter um, take pictures of while I was trying to unwind the passion vine from the trellis that it came on. Oh my goodness, it was so tangled up and I really had to take my time so I didn't break the plant apart. But I didn't shoot any more video um, during this planting. I was totally out of breath after, um, you know, I had gotten it up on the twine and just guided it up. It really took a lot of effort to untangle uh, how they had placed it on the trellis. I had gotten this actually down at Butterfly World in Coconut Creek. We used to go there when my daughter was younger and I loved it there. And this is a native butterfly um, food source, I believe, for caterpillars. I have to look up the butterfly and uh, get back to you about that. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll post it at the end of the video for you. But yeah, we um, are really excited about having fruit and also butterfly nectar and um, other plants for the caterpillars, the food resources for the caterpillars. I'm hoping to maybe have a certified garden by the time everything is planted and done. Um, I did top dress with just some mu mushroom compost, that was what was available, and some earthworm castings. Um, the mushroom compost was at Lowe's and the earthworm castings were at Walmart. And here you see it, it's all dressed, it's top dressed. And my dad's name was facing upward when I went to grab the warp break and I just thought that was awesome. Thanks for joining me as I planted this um, Passiflora edulis and we should be getting some fruit from it, hopefully real soon. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining me today while I planted my first food forest plant. Let me know what was your favorite or what was your first food forest plant that you planted in your backyard. 
I'm Carol, Mama Woods, and I hope that you have a blessed rest of your day, and thank you for taking the time to get to the end of this video, too. We appreciate it so much.